So over the last five years or so, I've been trying to figure out the best ways to make these kind of cyberpunk or urban environments in Blender. And uh, in this video, I'm just gonna go over what I think are the most important things that, that go into making these kinds of environments and how to make them not feel just overwhelming both as the creator and as a viewer, someone who's seeing it for the first time. So I first wanna talk about how to achieve that like almost overwhelming amount of detail that these renders seem to have. And then I'll go into some more practical advice of like some things you can do to just make this process easier overall, how to make the renders feel a bit more alive and real. And then finally, I wanna go into how to effectively guide the viewer's attention through the image in a way that is most pleasing to the eye. So one of the things that happens a lot with these kinds of renders is that there's so many different lights and colors and neon signs and just chaos happening in the image. I wanna give you some tips and pointers to kind of bring that level of chaos into something that's a lot more manageable. And there's a lot of tips you can do to, to influence that. Okay, so the first thing to understand is that these renders look extremely complicated, but the, the details are probably not anywhere near as hard as you might think they are to make. So for example, like when you look at a, entire, a render of an entire city, it looks extremely complicated and like it, one person could not make that much stuff. It, that's what it looks like. If you just imagine like if you had to make one small piece of this city, say even one, one single little prop, like one air conditioning unit, I bet you could figure out how to make that one little section, right? An air conditioning unit is mostly a cube, maybe a little bit of detail, but not that much if it's from far away. I bet you could make that without any guidance even. I bet you could even make one single building from like a medium to far distance away. Like you could, you could probably figure that out. And if you don't know how to do that at all, you could probably find some tutorial that would help you make one single building from a medium to far distance, right? And so if you can do one single building, that's all a, a city is, it's just a bunch of those put together. And you might think like, well, yeah, maybe I could make one, but making an entire city might take, that's gonna take way too much time. That kind of brings me to my next point, which is that you have to understand that there's there's always a gradient fall off of detail as you get further and further away from the camera. So up close to the camera, things are gonna be highly detailed and you're gonna to have to put more effort and energy into making the things that are up close or the things that take up more space in the frame, in the picture. Those things require more detail because they're just bigger, they take up more space in the frame. Things that get further and further away require less and less detail, literally just because they take up less pixel, pixels in the picture. And so there's, you're seeing less of it, it looks smaller in the frame, they require less detail to make. In, like if you're making a huge cityscape, let's, say, let's use this as an example. In this city here, almost the entire city is made up of fairly, like very, very, very low poly shapes, mostly just like almost cubes with just building textures wrapped around them. So there's some higher poly buildings that I've thrown in there, like thrown in there once in a while to spice it up. But most of the buildings are extremely low poly. Up close to the camera is where most of the detail is. And there's a few things in the, in the like the mid ground between the foreground and the background where there's, yeah, there's some higher, higher poly objects thrown in there to make it feel a bit more interesting. But as you get further and further into the distance, there's fewer and fewer of those. And it's just mo mostly in the horizon line, almost entirely just basically cubes with textures on them. Up close to the camera, there's, you know, more higher poly wires and air conditioning units and detail and stuff like that. But yeah, as you get further away, it's it's this gradient fall off of detail up close or in the areas that matters and less and less detail as you get further away because those smaller objects don't need as much. And so that means another thing too, is that you, you're, you're basically, it, it might take the same energy and time to make a street level environment as it might take to make a full cityscape. Although one looks more, much more complex than the other, it's just how you're allocating the detail. So in this, in this street level render, you might put the same amount of time that you'd normally put into making an entire city of low poly objects into one main building, for example, with like a medium or high level of detail. And so that's where you're allocating all your time into, into that versus in the, the huge cityscape, your time is going to go more into making not any one particular building look good, but the whole thing as a giant city made up of lower poly shapes because it's small and far away. It's taking up barely any pixels in the render. And that means you can get away with kind of more and more hacky technique and uh, it'll look just as good. And I think this is even a, a positive thing to do this because it means that if you have an object that is so far away that you can't tell the difference between if you spend an hour or one minute on it because it's literally so small in the distance, you can't even see any of the details. 
it makes sense to spend less time and put less energy into that thing because that means you can take the same energy and time that would normally go into making that and put it into the stuff that actually matters. I think everyone has kind of a, a limit and a, a, a limit to which they're willing to put time and energy into any one artwork. And if you, if you waste that time and energy on things that literally don't matter at all because you can't even make out any of the details and you can't see it, you're just making the whole quality, the whole image quality worse because you're allocating detail to spots that don't require it. And eventually, eventually you're going to get tired of working on this thing. And you're just going to, the way I think of it is like, you kind of have to allocate your, uh, your time and attention to this piece in a kind of a limited way. If you waste it on things that you can't even see or are outside the camera view are not going to get rendered or so tiny in the distance that it, there's no point in adding detail to it. You are, you are sacrificing overall image quality and, and on the, on the positive side of this, like that means that anything past a certain point requires such little effort that it, it becomes easy to add a level of detail. So with those two things, the, this gradient fall off of detail, also duplication, a lot of these things are duplicated a bunch of different times. So you don't have to make every single thing from scratch every time. And then also with the way, just understanding like things that farther away distances require less time and energy are going to be easier to render. You can start to get an idea of how the level of detail in these environments starts to come together. Okay, the next tip I want to give you is just some things related to like how you should think about these types of environments and some things you can do to make this a lot easier and also just make them feel more real and alive and personal. When I first started learning Blender, I would do this thing all the time. I don't do it as much anymore. I still do sometimes, but before it was like a little bit obsessive. It was a bit weird, but this is what I'm talking about. So I think it's a good idea to just as you go about your day, look around at objects around you and just think about like, how would I make that shape in Blender? Or how would I make that texture in Blender? Or how would I make that style of lighting in Blender? What that's gonna do is it's gonna, your, your mind will start generating ideas of possible solutions to that problem that you've just presented to yourself. And you're kind of just running, running that on autopilot. And then by the time you do get back to the software and you're ready to just start making something, you're, you, you're actually a lot more prepared to try and make certain shapes and bring certain ideas to life because you're, you've kind of been thinking about this in the background or even consciously thinking about it. This is especially like, this kind of brings me to my next point as well. Like if you go to a city and spend time there, uh, just like, just go downtown to your local city, whatever it is. And you'll start paying attention to all these details of an actual city. And if you just start wondering about how you might make these things, you'll be surprised with how many solutions you'll actually come up with. And then when you're ready to get back to Blender, it's like you just start going and you just start making stuff. If you can travel, go to like a place like Japan or you know some other city that is like a, a kind of a real life cyberpunk city almost. And you, you'll, you'll pick up a lot of things that you can translate into your artwork. This has really been true for me. Like even just going, I live outside Vancouver, just going downtown here, like a lot of the kind of styling and the kind of vibe of the city here has made it way, made its way into my work. Um, and also like traveling too. I went to Japan earlier this year. Those ideas that I've, that I saw that are kind of starting to make their, their way into my artwork as well. And yeah, it's just a, it's a great way to get ideas. So if you, if you can't travel or you don't live next to a big city, one other thing you can do is use like Google maps, just go into street view. And like, before you start your next project, if it's a city render, just go through Google maps and like take some screenshots of uh, like on street view, just cool stuff. That's not going to be as good as going to an actual city in real life, but it's better than nothing. And it's still quite helpful sometimes to do that. Google earth is another one. So Google earth gives you, this gives you literally a 3d model of the entire world of any, like any city you want. So that's super helpful for like just getting the, the proportions and the scale of different types of buildings and the streets and the way that the buildings are placed around the streets and the, the layout of a city. All, all that stuff, just getting the kind of, I mean, you literally have a 3D interactive model of any city you want. That is really helpful for creating your own cities in 3D. So it's something I've been doing recently and I've found it's really been helpful for getting like good, realistic looking cities. It's just looking at Google Earth and trying to figure out like, um, just help using it to help you understand the, the proportions of an actual city, but like, especially from a perspective that you wouldn't normally be able to get. I should also mention at this point that every single example that you've been seeing in this video so far, I've recorded myself creating from start to finish and explaining it the whole way through as part of a new cyber environments course that I've just released. So if you want to learn everything that I have to teach about making cyberpunk renders, how to manage all this, if you like what I'm talking about in this video, we go way more in depth into that. Go check it out. There's a link below. 
So the next piece of advice I want to give you for these kind of cyberpunk renders is to be mindful of the viewer's attention. So what I mean is that somebody who's seeing your work for the first time, they don't see it the same way that you see it as you as the creator, see it differently than everyone else. So you have to be mindful that everyone else is seeing it for the first time. You've been working on this for hours and hours and hours by the time you're done. Everyone else is seeing it for the first time and you have to be mindful of where their attention is going to go naturally. So I found that within within cyberpunk renders, there's a few common compositional techniques that will come up naturally in these kinds of renders that you can use to your advantage to help make the picture a lot more interesting and a lot more, uh, just a lot easier for people to look at uh, and just things you can do to guide people's attention in a very strategic way in order to make the image more pleasing. So here's exactly what I mean. Here's some examples. So one thing that will come up a lot is of course, like bright glowing neon signs. So these are, these will create uh, bright or high contrast and bright areas. So your eye will naturally gravitate towards areas in the picture that are very bright or very high contrast. And so you have to be mindful. This can be a positive, very powerful technique that you can use, or it can be a huge distraction depending on how you do it. So you have to, you have to remember that just keep in mind that people have limited attention when they see your picture. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like attention span, like video retention, anything like that. I'm literally talking about like when you look at something, you're, you're not looking at the entire image all at once. You're looking at a point. And that, that's what I mean by limited attention. It's like when you look at something, you're literally looking at a small point and your eyes are going to move around the image in order to see the entire thing. So when you have areas of extreme brightness, like a, a big glowing neon sign, you have to be mindful that people's eyes are going to go towards that. And if you have neon signs everywhere and so many different places all over the image, you're, you're diverting people's attention in so many different directions that you'll just risk losing it entirely. If people, if people see your image and they don't know where they should look, it, it just is overwhelming for people. It, that's where you get people just saying like, I, I don't even know what I'm supposed to look at. I don't know what I'm looking at. So that's what, that's what you want to avoid. You want to avoid confusion and overwhelmingness when you show people your images. And one way to do that is just be very careful about where you're placing neon signs. Just realize that bright glowing objects attract attention. If you think about this in real life, like what, what is the reason that people use neon signs in a real city? It's because it gets attention. And then everyone's like out competing each other with like, bigger, brighter neon signs, you just get to a point where it's like a, a real life cyberpunk city with neon everywhere. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make here is just be mindful of where you're guiding people's attention and you want to use use this to your advantage rather than as a disadvantage. You want to guide people's attention towards something that you want them to look at, guide them towards the, the focal point or something that's important in the image instead of just scattered everywhere. Some other ways you can do that, just pass neon signs. Something that comes up very often in cityscape renders like this is, for example, the sides of buildings converging in the distance. Uh, that'll create a natural sense of like leading lines through the image. So leading lines is just a technique you can use where, na again, natural lines will just come up in the image. And if you kind of angle things in a way that it points towards something that you want people to look at, it will, it will kind of act as like a train track that will kind of hook people's attention or their gaze and guide them along this path towards the thing that you want them, want them to look at. And you can do this with like, again, the sides of buildings, um, things like things like wires can help guide people's attention towards something. Even if, if we look at this cityscape example from earlier, like the lines of the building below kind of converging on a point coming towards the people, even in this one, there's like this big, neon strip down the middle. There's kind of lights and chaos everywhere, but there's this main strip of bright lights down the middle that kind of guides you towards the people at the bottom. And it's, I've done that very intentionally to try and grab your attention. If you're, if it ends up anywhere in that region, it's gonna grab your attention and guide you along that path in the image down towards exactly where I want you to look. So it's these things that will help make the image feel a lot more pleasant and just less chaotic overall. Another thing you can do to help reduce kind of the chaos of a cyberpunk image while not like getting rid of things or sacrificing any detail that you actually want, you can use the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. And before you click off because you think this is like too basic advice, I, I think the beauty of this technique is in its simplicity. Let me just explain. So if you don't know what this is, uh, the golden ratio or the rule of thirds, the rule of thirds is just a simplified version of the golden ratio. The rule of thirds is you just split up the 
Just split up the picture into thirds. So you have two vertical and two horizontal lines to split it into thirds. I'll just put a grid up so you can see the, the, the what I'm talking about. And by the way, you can turn this on in Blender. If you just go click on the camera, go to uh, the camera settings, viewport display, composition guides, and then enable either the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. You can use either one. And then what you want to do is just line up any important part of the image, either with like an intersection of those two grid lines, one of the four intersections, or you, if you have like something that's a straight line, you can line it up, for example, like the horizon line, you can line up with one of the rule of thirds lines. And this is totally optional. You don't always have to do this. It's just a tool that you can use sometimes if you want. And the reason I'm suggesting it specifically here is because in like a cyberpunk city render, there's so much chaos and stuff happening that sometimes I feel like a, a simple technique, like the rule of thirds, where you just line up, like, for example, in this one, the people standing on the roof, the subject here, just line it up with the rule of thirds. It makes it feel it, like it just, it's kind of an anchor in this just chaotic mess of neon and like city stuff everywhere. It's kind of this anchor that just brings a little bit more order back into the picture and doesn't make it feel quite as overwhelming. So that's why I like doing it. And again, you don't, don't use this every single render. You don't have to do that. It's just a tool that you can use sometimes if you're feeling like it's a bit too overwhelming. Here's another example of some leading lines in a picture. So in this example here, we have the big glowing cube in the middle. Again, notice how I am like limiting where your attention goes towards bright areas. The bright areas are quite concentrated and I've done that on purpose so that you're not scattered everywhere. So that's one thing. Notice the leading lines on the, on the sides too. So just by it kind of in a natural way that was sort of not that intentional, but in retrospect, makes sense that I did this. There's lots of natural lines in this composition, like on the on the kind of industrial sides of the image that are leading you towards like the center point of the picture, further helping you just like naturally look at that spot without effort. So like the goal of these things is to help you to help guide your attention in a way that you might not even be aware of when you're looking at it, but it just feels pleasant when you do see it. If you're still skeptical of these like compositional techniques I keep talking about, maybe this will kind of help you wrap your head around it and, and why I think it's so important. So the human eye has evolved over millions of years for a, for a natural environment, not necessarily for like big cyberpunk cities that like we have now in modern life. The human eye is more optimized and evolved to live in an environment, which is like a natural setting. So there's things like, you know, your ability to detect uh, contrast or your ability to detect a subject from a complex, say forest or something background, your ability to detect like the, this is why like high saturated colors stand out above everything else is because in nature that signifies something that is important. Same thing with contrast or like a figure, uh, you know, a silhouette. Um, all, all these things are like natural cues to the human eye, which just snap your gaze towards that thing. Even like when you're moving through a three-dimensional environment, in, like in real life, I'm talking about your, your ability to detect the, the path that you're going to take through this three-dimensional environment. So all, all these things are like evolved mechanisms, which are, are features of human perception still now. And you can leverage these things in order to make your images just naturally beautiful to the human eye. So think about how powerful that is. If you can leverage just natural human perception to create things that people can't even, people cannot help but find these things beautiful if done right. Okay, if you've made it this far in the video, you'll probably wanna go check out the new cyber environments course I just mentioned earlier. Basically, I'll show you how to make these four renders from start to finish each one. You get access to the blend files. You can just go in there, take any asset from there. There's also three packs of models that it comes with. So there's like a cyberpunk streets pack for just filling out detail in the streets. There's an industrial pack and then a whole pack of buildings as well and people and a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So if you're interested, it's awesome. Go check it out, link below. That's it, thanks for watching, bye.